Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, my name is Chris Ogle, and this is another episode of What's My Story, which is an area of Link for Growth where we encourage people to say a little bit more about their life and a little bit more about their background rather than just describe what they do for a living, which is kind of what we get used to in networking events, not a link for growth events, I hasten to add. However, let me introduce my guest today, Mark Malford. Come and say hello. Hello, Chris. How are you? <laughs> I'm really good, thanks, mate. Um, now, we're going to get stuck in, because I'm oh, going to start the clock. We're going to get stuck in, because uh, uh, you haven't got as much of a life history as me yet, which we quite pleased about. Um, but... Uh, I know that uh, you're involved in video production and filmmaking, which is all really exciting, but how did that all start? Did you wake up in your early teens and say, I want to make movies, or how did, how did that come about? <laughs> well, it's, it's a bit of an odd one, because um, like sort of most, most kids, you know, you, you grow up in front of a TV, really, and you kind of... Um, you watch a lot of films and you, you get stuck into it. And it wasn't really until I kind of um, was looking at university choices and I was I was kind of thinking to myself, well, what sort of things do I like? Because before that, I'd actually, you know, my I'd, I'd kind of planned to um, get into something creative, but kind of model making. That was sort of my, my passion, if you like, back then. And, you know, I tried a few a few work experience placements and nothing really, really sort of was grabbing my attention that that much. Um, and it wasn't really until, yeah, like I said, when I was uh, looking at university places and looking at various courses that I could take that I came across um, uh, my course, which is called Entertainment Technology. And I was kind of reading through it and some of the the bits that were involved in it, it was a very broad broad course, but there was bits I stood out with that was to do with video and it, when I actually went to university down in Portsmouth and started you know studying studying down there and doing these these various bits and pieces the the video parts of the course really you know took my attention and I had the opportunity to kind of pick and choose you know different different parts of the syllabus that I could study more and so I kind of guided my course towards video production and, and that's kind of where I learned the basics and the theory behind it all and um, yeah and that's when I thought I really like doing this and uh, this is what I want to do as a career. So what what kind of happened as uh, you, so you finished university uh, you've kind of majored as you've indicated there on video production i mean i i do quite a lot of video work i can't stand all that video manipulation <laughs> stuff it just does it's just it, i suppose it's because i've got rubbish computer equipment and that stuff really <laughs> is uh, quite powerful kit i reckon but what so what, what where did the journey go from university when it what happened after that well i'm sure as many many people were probably aware the, the video production industry and filmmaking in, in as a whole is very competitive so it wasn't a case that I finished university and, and went straight into a job um, in the industry I actually ended up working at a casino um, purely because it was the the first place that offered me <laughs> offered me a paycheck and sort of when you come out of university and you've got no money really to your name you just think wow I need to get something something on the table so I ended up working for a year in um, at a casino and and during that year, I was going off to, um, I was applying to loads and loads of different jobs and, and uh, going to interviews and being rejected pretty much on a weekly basis, which is, is pretty tough. And it's, it's a, it was very much a case of sticking, sticking to my guns and, you know, believing that I could actually get it. And I eventually did and um, ended up sort of uh, getting a job uh, for a production company up in Ipswich, sort of working, uh, working in the corporate, corporate world. So, and what, and what what sort of uh, video work was that? Was it stuff that you had studied at college, was it, or university? Was was the was the study that you'd done relevant and appropriate, or was it a case of, well, I got the theory, but to be honest, this is nothing like the reality. <laughs> no, it was extremely helpful because the. The, the basics that I learned at university kind of gave me the foundation to, you know, apply them in, in a real world situation. And the corporate, the corporate world is very, very different to um, 
the creative side of things, which is probably what uh, you know, look at university. They kind of focus more on you know when you when you get into a job, you're going to do you know a lot of creative work, and that really isn't the case because a lot of people these days just want a good solid um video whether it be kind of a, a piece to camera an interview or some sorts or just recording an event and it doesn't need high production values but it needs to be done well and it needs to be done properly and that's kind of what i i learned at university so going off into the corporate world and just being able to pick up a camera and know where the uh, where the on button is was you know a great benefit because you know a, a the cameras that we use in the industry they're a little bit more uh, a little bit more complicated than your uh, you know your, your points and shoot cameras that you can get from Argos should we say so it, it was definitely beneficial in, in that regards yeah and, and so in that first corporate role after did you stick that out I mean because now you work for yourself uh, so did you stick that out for years and years and years or did you move around or yeah I I stuck with a full-time employment for just over five years and it was a case of um i went from this production company in ipswich and then i uh, did that for a year but it was on a very uh, on a very low paycheck as a lot of you know entry-level jobs are when you get into the video industry so you're kind of on a, you're always on the lookout for the sort of next step the step up the ladder and um, for me that was when i went off to um edit a caravan tv show of all things um I, I have no interest in caravans whatsoever, but uh, the, the, what, what sort of grabbed my attention and what's you know why I wanted to do that job was because it was a step in into broadcasting um, and actually being in charge of editing um, a bi-weekly uh, television show was you know the appealing part and it kind of gave me the chance to sit down in front of a PC on a daily basis using um, an editing. Uh, editing software called uh, Adobe Premiere and I got to learn it very very well and just kind of knowing the in, ins and out of it um, and even though the content that I was editing I um, you know it was a it was some of it was very boring to say at least I mean it probably appealed to to other people but for me I was just I was just grateful to kind of be in a role you know sat in front of a PC doing doing the thing that I love doing and then from then I you know I was I am really settled down in Ipswich, um, so I was kind of open to sort of traveling all over the place, which you kind of, if you're going to get into this industry, you have to be, have that ability to kind of be flexible and be open to, you know, going to a new place that you've never been to before and, and working in that area, because it's very unlikely that you will, if you, if you grow up, for instance, um, in a town uh, in, in the rural districts of Wiltshire, it's very unlikely that you're going to get a job uh, straight away in the media industry. So you have to kind of have that, that mentality of not being afraid to look elsewhere. Um, and for me, I ended up then finding a job in Peterborough for another production company who, who did a lot of work down in, down in London. And, um, and I like Peterborough so much, I decided to stay here. And then it was a case of after the sort of, you know, doing it for a good five years, listening to other people and being told what to do. I thought, well, you know, I'm in a good position, you know, financially and, you know, I didn't have major, many, many commitments to make. And I thought, well, I'll give it a try doing it myself. And so far it's nearly come up to a year and uh, I'm still here. So I uh, must be doing something, right? Yeah. I know that you've just recently been involved in actually making a, uh like a film in Peterborough and it's part of the whole concept of you don't have to be in London. You don't have to be uh, thinking, you know, like massive projects, but actually local, uh, local talent, local people and local production is mm. now really becoming a reality. What with the, with, with the costs of everything coming down and the more, more power that's in our hands. Yeah, yeah. I mean, the the film um, called Dishonored. It's it's like you say, it is, it is a local production because I hate to say it, but in in the industry, it seems very centered around kind of London and Manchester. You know, even though I said you know you have to be open to um, being, you have that mentality that you you know you're not afraid to move places you know, in the Peterborough area in particular and sort of South Lincolnshire and, and areas like that, it needs 
it needs that that you know that that's that video sector if you like and that, that ability to give people the chance to kind of do a get involved in video production but not have to move a million miles you know 100 miles away to uh, to a major city so yeah the the film is very much a a local local production with local local talents um many of which are uh i suppose you would say we were amateurs um but hopefully with this you know if it if it's successful and we make more stuff from it then those amateurs will sort of turn into semi-professionals and who knows what will what will come from it really i i think it's a, a real fantastic initiative because i i mean I, I sit in front of a camera quite often and you know um and you know it, it's probably still rubbish but at least at least i don't feel embarrassed by it. <laughs> uh, but uh, i think that as we move through the next few years the, the the real and like you said at the meeting last week ultimately a picture says a thousand words but videos you know, they can, and, and the reason why we're doing these things that we're doing right now is because actually people can really, you know, fall in love in, in not in the not in the biblical sense, but fall in love with with people or their style or their approach because they can get to see far more uh, the inflection, the inflection, the way they say things, the way their the way their face is actually describing what it is that they're doing or. Or what they're involved in it, you just can't get that any other way and unless you meet people and and you know um, we've got the technology now so why the hell not use it oh very much so is you know it's like you say the video video if you if you look back a few years video was still very much kind of out of reach of, of um, the general public and it you know the internet was still sort of you know i suppose in its early days you could say so it, things like youtube and facebook weren't as accessible but in today's world you know i'm sure there's people out there that sit in front of their laptop or pc at a lunch break and will just just look at random videos on the internet and kind of get getting grow you know get brought into the, into that world and it's the accessibility behind it so you know in terms of video i, I been you know doing it for a living i you know it might seem a little bit biased in saying that it's the way forward but certainly if you want to get your message across and you want to help people and you want to show people exactly who you are then there is no better um outlet than video because i i certainly wouldn't be able to kind of sit down um and write a five page essay on you know how how to come across um re, you know how to promote promote myself but give me a camera and give me a video and I can, I can do it in a various, various amounts of styles and I can make it interesting or I can make it very, you know, very powerful. There's just so much more to a video and the opportunities for people to make that video as well is, is, is growing. So yeah, just video is, is, is the future basically I'd say. Uh, and I mean, I, I'm I'm thinking that from a cost perspective now, the actual cost of um, of producing videos has gone right down. And 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 interestingly enough, um, you know, this type of video that we're doing right now, which is free, it's part of the Google Plus platform. You know, you can record it, go straight to YouTube. Okay, it's not being edited, but you know, uh, we're both professionals. It doesn't need editing, does it? Um, and, um, and and we can communicate a message. And and actually, this is quite this is quite an important uh, video. In the this is the start of a transition from, if you like, me talking about video and TV as far as length of growth is concerned. To get in somebody who actually knows what they're doing involved, i.e., you. <laughs> I like to think I know what I'm doing. You know, it's it, yeah. <laughs> and and you know, today really is about is a, is about me sort of handing over the the reins really to you. Uh, in the um, once once we've done this one and we posted it up and 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 yeah, the way forward now from. From, from Link for Gross perspective is the whole TV platform, which is all video based, it's all YouTube based, is all about 
enabling people who would typically not have even thought that they could be in a video, not even considered that as an option, to be able to come forward in this kind of interview and, and other types, because we've got other types, and actually have a video, experience it, and and at least have something that they can share with other people with, it, with an absolutely no technical knowledge at all really required by that person. And who knows that you know, from those humble beginnings, um, somebody might be able to do a huge amount in terms of video and what they're doing online through this mechanism. Yeah, I mean, it's really, really easy. And to be honest, I, I kind of forgotten that we actually uh, were broadcasting live. Um, and, and that's the thing, video is, it's not as scary as some people might think it is. I mean, I, I, I know from doing my job, you stick a camera in front of some people and they, and they just turn to jelly. But hopefully, like you say, this will kind of encourage people just to give it a try and just to see how easy it is. Because, you know, everyone's got a story to tell at the end of the day. And I know there are some people that kind of, you know, don't want to be in, fr in front of a camera and get a bit shy about it. But this really is, it really is as simple as, you know, talking to someone on the phone at the end of the day. And I think once you've done it once, um, you get a bug for it. I know I certainly, certainly did when I first started doing video. And once you've done it once, you you know, you can tell your friends how good it is. And they can get involved and, and who knows, you know, we'll, we'll get lots, we'll get lots of people where, uh, you know, doing this, uh, this hangout and starting a, a new wave of, uh, of uh, free information basically for people. Yeah, absolutely right. And, and, you know, I'm, I'm, I, I reckon I've got three, what's my stories or four or five, perhaps what's my stories. Not that I'm going to do them all in one go, but uh, different aspects of people's lives, which, uh, which, which which brings out certain elements of their character and their journey and and you know i'm i'm looking forward i don't we'll have to arrange it afterwards when we're off air but i'm looking forward to doing mine and maybe that'll be the first one that you do <laughs> <laughs> turn the tables chris it's uh, it sounds like it'll be good fun <laughs> all right well look, we've, we've been speaking already for about 16 minutes so uh we're, we're out of time, but uh, I'm sure there's a huge amount more that uh, you could share with us, uh, Mark, and uh, people get along to an event that Mark's at, or, or why not um, put yourself forward for a What's My Story? Because uh, from here on in, it's uh, it's Mark. <laughs> it's me, and I'm, I'm not a scary guy. I might be uh, six foot five in height, but really I'm uh, I'm the friendly, friendly video person. So, yeah, if you see me at an event, do do sort of come up and say hello and uh, um, yeah if you've got a story do let me know because uh, I love I love to tell a story and I love to get you guys involved in uh, in front of the camera so uh, yeah do come and speak to me all right so uh, thanks for doing this then uh, Mark it will go well it will be up there and uh, I'll get get sharing it a bit later on so uh, thanks for coming on and I will see you soon no problem Chris been an absolute pleasure all right, take care now. <laughs> Cheers. Cheers. That's it. That's the end of this particular one. Uh, and uh, um, loads more coming up as Mark uh, is, gets his feet under the table. So uh, watch out for plenty more What's My Stories. And uh, thanks for watching. Yeah.